Hello everyone, welcome to another battle report for my channel. Uh, just like always, we have another Kings of War battle report. Uh, today we have Dwarves versus Abyssals. Uh, this is a 2200 point game. In the scenario, uh, randomly selected at the tournament was Invade. So, this was a three game one day tournament in Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, 2200 points using the Clash of Kings comp pack. Um... The scenarios, again, I, like I said, were rolled randomly, so um, if you watched the last game, I did a pretty had a pretty big win, so it, it uh, rocketed me forward, um, which is fine, um, but so here's my army on its display board. Pause if you want to see it. Um, I'm going to carry on. So for this tournament, my list was as follows. Uh, playing dwarves, I have two regiments of Iron Guard. Both of the regiments have the throwing dogs option and the two-handed, one of them has a two-handed weapon upgrade. Uh, I have two hordes of Earth Elementals, a Berserker Brock Rider Regiment with the Caterpillar Potion, two Flame Belchers, one Steel Behemoth, one Greater Earth Elemental, one Army Standard Bearer with the Healing Charm, one Ranger Captain with Wings of Honey Maze, a Berserker Lord mounted on a Brock with a Blade of Beast Slayer, and I have two Stone Priests, both of them with the Bane Chant Upgrade, one with the Inspiring Talisman, and one with the Fireheart Amulet that lets you cast two spells in one turn. So Abyssals, um, my opponent has as follows a Regiment of Flame Bearers with Jar of the Four Wind, a Troop of Gargoyles, a Lower Abyssals Horde with the Brew of Strength, a Horde of Molochs with Blessing of the God, Torture Soul Regiment times two, Hellhound Troop time two, uh, two Ifrits, one Cronius, uh, one Abyssal Temptress with Bane Chant and the Wings upgrade, and an arch fiend with the wings upgrade and the ensorcelled armor item. Uh, so deployment. Um, I'll go from right to left. Uh, we have some dogs uh, behind the dogs. That giant eye thing is the Cronius. Um, next to them we have flame bearers. Uh, the flying guys, or the well, the old plague drones, are the Molochs. Uh, behind them somewhere is the Abyssal Temptress, and there's an Ifrit somewhere in there, too. Uh, behind the middle impassable thing is the uh, Gargoyles. Then we have the Horde of Lower Abyssals. Uh, the Demon is the Demon. Um, those uh, Screech, I think they were Screechers from Warhammer, are one of his troops. Um, and then on the far end, you can see his other, or his, uh, regiment. Those are two regiments of Tortured Souls. He Lone Ifrit on the end. Um, and this is a bit of a spoiler picture because this also includes my Vanguard and start of turn one. Um, because you can see my Ranger Captain has uh, Vanguarded and then charged his Ifrit on turn one. Um, then you also see some dogs way on the left. Um, so this is what deployment looks like. I And this is also turn one. Ha! Huh, I got it all wrong. Anyway. I'm not going to go back and fix it. This is also turn one. Turn one. Um, you're just some other pictures of, of turn one. So um, for my deployment, I'll go back. So, yeah, okay. So I have my tank and my iron guard with no two-handed weapons and my Brock Riders on the left. Um, that piece of white styrofoam in the middle we were playing as impassable. Um, you can see I ran my Berserker Brock Lord up there. Um, I was just honestly hoping that his um, Demon Prince would poke out. I guess he's not a Demon Prince, he's an Archfiend, but you get my point. That he would poke out and he could go smack him around him. Otherwise he could go um, probably beat up some characters or something. Uh, the rest of my units line up as such. You can see my Greater Earth Elemental Flame Belcher, Earth Elemental Flame Belcher, Earth Elementals. Um, up front with my Iron Guard leading behind. Um, again, I did take first turn. I rolled for the option. It is Invade. I am super slow. <laughs> uh, and I need to go first because otherwise I'm going to have a hell of a time getting across the board. So, yeah. Then my Stone Priest. So, uh, yeah, turn one. Um, turn one, I get the option to go first. And I take it like I normally do. I end my um, Ranger Captain charges the Arch Fiend and does a point of damage, which is great. Or not the Archfiend, sorry, the Ifrit. Making all sorts of mistakes today. Um, so, um, that's all that happened. Everything goes out of range for the rest of my shooting. Um, so, Abyssal's turn one. He moves up quite cautiously. 
um, that actual that um, gem he put out there on the table was the potential flame range. Um, I didn't look at his list as probably thoroughly as I should beforehand, but he, everything he has is really pretty low defense. And so I, I, I understand now why he was so concerned about my flame belters. I didn't quite at the time. Um, yep, and you can see the other side. He uh, sends his one of his fallen or uh, tortured souls into my ranger captain. Uh, that's fine. Um, the only thing he didn't do is he just kind of backed his Efreed up. He didn't... <laughs> He didn't, he didn't move him out so I couldn't see him next turn. So, just a little mistake. Um, also, he didn't move his Archfiend up as much as I hoped he would. Um, so, my Berserker Lord isn't quite in the position to do what I would hope. And you can see way over here, his dogs come screaming around. Uh, in combat, he gets uh, Bane Chan off on his um, Flame Bearers, but it's not really a big deal. Um... I think he gets like a point or two of damage to shooting, but it's, it's trivial. Uh, in combat, he's flying into the woods, which is great, so my ranger captain's fine. Uh, the only thing he rolls pretty well, and he actually wavers him, so that's kind of a bummer. Turn two. Um, turn two, I make my headstrong roll, so that's sweet. So my ranger captain can go punch the uh, Efreet some more. Uh, the other side of the board, um, I just start moving up. Um, again, pretty much just moving up at full... Um, full kilter, um, knowing full well that I have to get to the other side of the board. Um, I don't think I moved my flame cannons quite as far up as I could have, um, cause I'm trying to keep them out of line of sight for certain things. Um, you can see the other side, my, uh, my tank, everybody just moving up. Um, and my rock riders are cutting over. Uh, my intention was to... Um, you know, cut over and just start working on the other side of the board because I don't need all that damage over here. Um, my, again, my ranger captain goes back into the Efreet and does the, the point of damage that he needed to do, which is fine. Um, so there's what it looks like after Dwarf's turn two, uh, getting ready to take some charges. Um, see how that works. Um, so Abyssal's turn two, and it doesn't work so well. Um, I gave his arch fiend a flank into my... Um, earth elementals. Um, it was I was looking at this afterwards, and I don't think he. Well, okay, so he does he does really really well, but I you know I this probably didn't concern me as much as it should have. Let's just let's just put it that way. Um, you also see his stuff just kind of spreading out. He's still staying out of my flame belcher range with pretty much everything. Um, if anything, I said he, he probably should have moved his Cronius in because that's that thing's like defense five, and there's no way my flame belcher is going to win that contest. But anyway, he does what he does. Uh, he moves his gargoyles up to chaff some of my other stuff. Um, over here, he picks up a flank I didn't see as well. I don't play flying stuff as you guys could probably see <laughs> watching my channel more often. Um, so he pops his um, tortured souls over into the flank of my Brock Riders. Now it's not the end of the Brock Riders. Cause he's not gonna do that much damage to him, but it was something I should have, I should have seen. Um, and then he, uh, you can see way over there on the left, he finally um, moves his Efreed um, out of line of sight, so that if he fails to kill my Ranger Captain, I can't charge his Efreed again. Um, shooting again, he's staying out of my flame range, which means I'm out of his flame range, more or less. So uh, just a little bit of shooting, nothing particularly bad. Uh, over here, he ends up wavering my ranger captain again, I think, or, or not at all. It was pretty... Again, he keeps landing in the woods, and he's not getting a counter charge, so these guys aren't that damaging. So, um, Yeah, like I said, I should have been watching this a little better, um, but the Brock Riders are fine. <clears throat> Six points of damage isn't going to uh, hurt anybody. Yeah, and over here, his um his demon lord just goes to town. I think he has something like... What the, I guess I got the paper right here. Nine attacks. That's 18. So. He did better than average. <clears throat> That's for sure. Because um, he did 14 points of damage to these guys. And he probably should have done more like eight. But anyway. So they're gone. And that sucks. So there's my line. Um, the end of turn two. So uh, we happen to turn three. Um, turn three, I charge the gargoyles with my greater earth elemental. 
Um, I pivot and walk to within an inch of the arch fiend. Um, I'm going to do a double flame cannon plus a, uh, a surge just to try to take him down. I know there's not a good chance because he's defense six, but um, I don't know. I, I guess I was just kind of like, well, I, I got to do something, you know, when I got it. I gotta take this guy out if I can. Um, <clears throat> my Berserker Brook Riders counter charge those uh, tortured souls, which is fine. Uh, and my Ranger Captain was uh, wavered and didn't make his head strong this turn, so he's just standing there. In retrospect, nah, he probably couldn't have got out of line of sight. So, um, and here's me not using my Berserker Brock Lord very well. Um, they didn't really use him too well this game, but that's. Probably also benefit to my opponent. He did a pretty good job. Um, so I do shooting. Um, I unload with at least one Bane Shannon. Yeah, I can only... I, I don't remember what it was. I think I failed the second Bane Chant because I did have the fire amulet so I could surge and Bane Chant. But anywho, um, I do an abysmal amount of damage with shooting, but he is, again, he's defense six, and I'm only going to get piercing one at best. Um... And I get Surge in, so that's fine. Uh, over here, my tank does just a pretty crappy amount of damage um, to these guys, uh, which is, again, just me generally misplaying the tank. I should have just been chugging up as fast as possible, smashing him into something instead of just shooting. Uh, I might have thrown a dog at him, too, but it didn't matter too much. Uh, my Berserker Brock Riders clean up the lower abyssals and reform as such. Uh, my Greater Earth Elemental does quite a bit of damage to the Gargoyles, but I roll terrible, which is, you know... Not the worst thing that can happen. At least it doesn't look like it right now. Um, and you can't quite see the damage, but we don't do enough damage to even waver the... Um, I think I rolled like one under the waver of the uh, Archfiend, so that's a bummer, but he's fine. Uh, Vistal's turn three. The dogs keep tearing around. He goes back into my Ranger Captain. Um, his gargoyles go into my greater earth elemental. Sorry for some of these pictures. It is a tournament, so I'm trying not to... I don't have quite the time to take all the pictures I would want. Um, the dogs at the bottom there go into my flame cannon. Uh, Cronius and crew and everybody moves up. Um, he's realizing he doesn't actually have much to shoot at uh, on that side. So they're just a lot of this stuff's actually just moving up to score. Um... Here he does a double charge into my greater earth elementals. The um, lower abyssals come in the woods. So they are going to be hindered, but he does get a bane chant off on them, which essentially seals the doom for the uh, earth elementals. Uh, a little bit of shooting. I think the Ifrit finally got a chance to shoot, but these guys are defense six, so they're fine. The uh, ranger captain, I think he pops him here. I'm pretty sure he does. I just didn't take a put a thing in for that so let's assume he routed him uh the flame belcher gets routed the earth elementals get routed and yeah of course the greater earth elemental survives so that's what it looks like after abyssal turn three yeah you can see he repositioned those tortured souls on the left there after killing my ranger captain which also put him out of range of my tank, which was stupid slow tank. Turn four. Turn four. Um, all or nothing. Uh, <laughs> so I double charge his Archfiend with my Iron Guard with two-handed weapon upgrade and my Berserker Brock Lord. Um, I double charge the Gargoyles with my Greater Earth Elemental and my Berserker Brock Riders. Just uh, they didn't have anything else to do. Um probably could have done something else useful with him instead of that but that's fine uh, and over on this side everyone just keeps moving up or turning to heal people because I'm so slow <laughs> you know that it's so easy to not have to engage me so I just yeah, it is what it is uh, we put a little bit of a flame cannon into the um, Molochs in the woods but they're cool with it um, I think I do a little bit I do a little bit more shooting on the Ifrit but um, can't roll very well to save him. Uh, over here, though, I do pick up the... Um, the uh, I keep wanting to call it a demon lord. It's not a demon lord. 
or demon prince the archfiend um which is pretty lucky i think i even had to barely made it but that's good and then i reform like this so <laughs> um i had also charged that stone priest into those dogs there at the bottom um just because they were in a really bad position for me um i needed to <laughs> i wanted to not worry about them so uh, I did like that, but I did fail to do any damage to the dog, so, which is really negative for me because I really needed to strip that Thunderous Charge, but Stone Priests are not quite fighty, but they pay the points for it, it's, a, it's just, meh. Yeah. Not to get into that, um, and I do an exorbitant amount of damage to the Gargoyles and roll the dreaded double ones, which sucks, but it is what it is. So, uh, Dwarf turn 4, we, we pick up the Archfiend and we're just kind of repositioning some stuff. Um, Abyssal's turn 4 on the left, his um, Flyers charge my um, Army Standard Bear, which I didn't really see coming, but I guess kind of made sense. Um, I think his Gargoyles charge my Brock Riders. Yeah. And over here, his dogs go into my Stone Priest and his... Lower abyssals go into my berserker lord. Now, this is a very precarious position, as you can see. Um, especially when he gets a bane chant off on the dog. So if he if he kills that stone priest, um, I think he was within an inch, if, if not, you know, an auto in for that. So you know, I was feeling okay about stone priest blocking him up, but now they're gonna have crushing one thunderous one, and he's. Yeah. Not so good. And in the front, of course, the, the Berserker Lord is, you know, <laughs> he's squishy too. At least he has a high nerve. Uh, some shooting goes off. Um, he doesn't take anything out. Luckily, my stuff's all defense five. Um, so it's not quite as easy to shoot as some of his stuff would be. Uh, we go into combat. Um, yeah, they, they, um, <laughs> they, these guys don't do, any, don't do anything, really. Um, the uh, Berserker Lord holds, which is fantastic. Actually, he does pretty bad, but he is running in the woods. So, uh, And then more importantly, the Stone Priest holds. So, Stone Priest uh, save these uh, <clears throat> fine Iron Guard's life. And I was really, really going to need these Iron Guard if I was not going to lose this game. So, I'm playing for a draw at this point, but it was really important that I didn't lose the Iron Guard and I didn't do it. So, I got, I got really lucky. So, turn five. Um, pictures are going to be even more scarce because we're running out of time, but I'll try to cover it as best I can. Um, Berserker Brock Riders go into Gargoyles, kill Gargoyles. Um, <clears throat> Greater Earth Elemental flanks the Lower Abyssals. The Hindered Iron Guard go into the front of the Lower Abyssals, and we actually pick them up. Um, I, th I think it was something like the Greater Earth Elemental landed like 14 of his 16 hits. Or just, just something crazy. Like he just freaked out and smashed these guys um, really, really badly. And the dwarves didn't do bad either. I mean, they're hitting on fours, wounded on threes. So, I mean, that's that's not bad. Because, I mean, hindered. I mean, they're still at least Iron Guard. Um, I don't know about if I made the right decision or not. But I took my Berserker Lord and put him into the Ifrit. Um, I was honestly thinking maybe I could pick up some points or something, but I don't know if it was the right decision or not. Um, he probably could have charged something more useful, like maybe those flame bearers. I don't know. It's hard to say. I was hoping that he was just going to pick him up and then run an overrun, and then I could hopefully just run him away, but he doesn't do that good. So that's what it looks like after the end of Dwarves turn five. Um, again, just the tank and those Iron Guard away up at the top scoring, which is, you know, I still think scoring's good. And the tank keeps trying to breathe on the Ifrit up there, but it's not that it's not that good of a ranged weapon. Um, so, yeah, yeah, just showing all that stuff. Everybody's gone good. Okay, um, Abyssal's turn five. So the Molochs killed the Berserker Brock Riders. Um, he flies his tortured souls into score. He puts an Ifrit 
in front of my iron guard um, to chaff them up. And what else does he do? Oh, yeah, and over here he he breathes on. I think he, I think he put some of his shooting into the greater earth elemental and it didn't quite work out. Um, and then his uh, combined dogs and um, that lady, the flying abyssal temptress, um, pick up my stone priest. Um, oh, yeah, that's right, because I think he only had the cronius to shoot, and because the, the flame bearers are just going into score. So I'm missing a couple pictures here. Um, sorry about this, everybody. Uh, but again, it's a tournament, and, and we were running out of time. So here's here's the recap of what happened. So uh, Dorf turn six. Um, the left flank, nothing really happens. The tank scores. The iron guard score. The the stone priest with the healing charm scores half. Um, the greater earth elemental charges the Molochs. The iron guard charge the... Let's see if we can get a better picture of that here. The iron, yeah, so you can see the Iron Guard up there charge that Ifrit, kill him, and then make their 4 plus overrun to get into the Molochs and kill him. Or then, you know, get into the Molochs. And then the Molochs pop because they roll really well. And here you can see turn six, the Abyssals are starting their sixth turn, and we get diced down. Um, he had think he, I think he got some of his shooting done, um, but he didn't get to do his combat. So what he would have picked up was, um, I think what he probably would have picked up was the greater earth elemental, possibly. He wasn't too damaged, and that's probably it. Um, but the thing is, I th think the greater earth elemental scored... Which means that he didn't. I think that I think the Earth Elemental scored. I I have to look. I don't recall. It was. Here's the point. Um, dice down. He didn't get to finish the stuff he wanted to do, so it ended up being a tie. Now, dice down kind of sucks. Um, but we weren't playing with chess clocks, and our game was running long. You know, I'm not gonna point any fingers at anybody. It just was. So, it just happens um so uh results um it was a tie um uh, it was barely a tie uh, i think my opponent got like just sub 200 points beating me when he would have needed like 220 for the for the 10 percent thing so um the attrition went to the abyssals um no question um <laughs> the surprising thing is i curse i curse the, i might curse the tank in this game but <laughs> the tank scoring was a surprising amount of points uh, left on the board. So, you know, it, it just was. Um, subplots, it was it was very interesting to play Abyssals. Um, I never really played them before. I, I think I, well, I have. Not a lot, though. Um, and this was a little different, because actually seeing, like, some lower Abyssals and some of that stuff. Um, I did think I used the tank pretty poorly, uh, which will be a, a theme for the next game. Um, the tank never once hit anybody in combat. Um, sure, it fired his breath weapon, but that's not very useful. Um, my opponent did a really good job at picking up some flank charges I had missed. Um, especially that first one on that horde of earth elementals out front. I really could have used those guys <laughs> later on. Um, instead of just letting them have them. Well, or let, you know, letting them go. Um, the other one on the Brock Riders wasn't as big of a deal, but it happens. So, in the end, I was lucky to get a draw. Um, it was probably more like a 9-11 to my opponent, or, yeah, 9-11 with my opponent ahead, or maybe even an 8-12 um, because of the attrition, but it wasn't as bad as it could have been. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Um, I have one more report from this tournament uh, in which I play my, my arch nemesis, um, who will, maybe I'll go over the story of having an arch nemesis um, later. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Um, I'll try to get some better pictures for these other reports coming up.